Hey guys, Nick here with Queen City Scooters. So today I'm shooting another video for Super 73. We had such an overwhelming uh, response to the first video that we shot. We realized the need, um, you know, since there's uh, these things are so popular. You know, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there trying to learn how to uh, service them and repair them on their own. So we hope this helps you out. Uh, this video is going to be on bleeding your uh, your mineral base your mineral based hydraulic brake lines. All right, so. Uh, as I'm sure you're familiar, your uh, Super 73 comes with Tektro brakes, and uh, the best fluid to use in that is uh, the Shimano uh, mineral-based uh, hydraulic brake fluid, or mineral oil-based. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get to this. I've come up with a way that uh, of doing this that you're going to see kind of is contrary to what to a lot of videos that you'll see online, um, whereas people um, tend to recommend bleeding the brakes from the uh, from the brake handle from top to bottom I completely disagree all right that that couldn't be a a more counterintuitive way of bleeding a brake system I mean air bubbles rise right so the way I do it is I actually bleed from the caliper and this cuts the time literally by two-thirds in bleeding your brake system one thing that um, I went ahead and purchased was a was a bleed kit. This one happens to be uh, the company is Easy MTB. All right. Now uh, with this kit, it comes with everything. It comes with your uh, with your hose fittings to go directly into the brake handle and into the caliper. Comes with hoses, your your uh, bleeder syringe, an overflow uh, an overflow bottle and uh, a whole bunch of other little fittings that just seem kind of pointless to me and you'll probably never use. So, uh, you uh, want to make sure to uh, get your uh, mineral-based uh, hydraulic brake fluid. I, as I said, I recommend getting it from Shimano. Um, they just, they, they have the best fluid, in my opinion. So, in the brake handle, I've already put my brass fitting in the top of the caliper. What I'm going to attach to that is my overflow is my overflow bottle go ahead and hang that on the customer's phone holder all right and then down here at the caliper I've got my brass fitting put in all right and to that I'm going. Con I'm going to connect the syringe. Now I've got a a full a full vial of uh, the brake fluid filled up. You're not going to need all this, but you're going to need a lot of it. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and bleed the air out of the syringe. Go ahead and prime the fluid up to the top of the hose, and then we'll connect it to the brass fitting. All right, so the next step in this is you're going to go ahead and start pushing the plunger on the syringe down and feed the fluid through the lines. And what you're going to be looking for up top is when the fluid starts to come through the hose and deposit into the overflow bottle. You should see it any second now. Here it comes. All right, so, and, and what you're gonna do is you're actually going to go ahead and, um, and depress the plunger all the way down so that all the fluid from the syringe is in the line. Now, as I said, you're not gonna need all of this. You're not gonna use it all in the end, but you wanna have it. Because now what we're gonna do while leaving the syringe attached to the caliper, you're going to go back and you're going to start depressing your brake handle. All right, and, and what this is going to do is it's going to it's going to pull all of the air out of the line. So we pulled air into the top here. All right, we pulled a little air into there, but it's pulling any air that's in the line. And as you can see, the it's act you know that this. Yeah, this is how also how you know whether your brake system has pressure is if it's able to push the plunger back in the opposite direction. So 
we're gonna go ahead and now you see the air bubble here, right? So we'll go ahead and pull the brake fluid back through. We'll get that air out. And then we'll push the fluid back in. And you're gonna go back and forth like this about two or three good times, pushing the fluid back and forth between the line. And any air bubbles that are lodged are going to quickly release. Now, you're not gonna see a whole lot of action from this because I actually did this bike yesterday, but was not in the position to actually shoot the video because I had so many customers coming in and out of the store. get that guy sorry everything keeps falling out of frame I'm sitting here watching the top on pushing the plunger down okay so now at this point I know that this brake that this brake line is free of air as I said because we've already done this so once you've done that two or three times, and, and when you're doing it, you're gonna see as, you're pre as you press your, um, your brake handle and the fluid dumps back down into the syringe, when you push the syringe back down, you're gonna see all this air coming out of your line. All right, and that's why you wanna do it two or three times because that fluid moving back and forth pushes the air bubbles up according to physics, which is why I don't do it from the top. It seems, you know, like I said, it's counterintuitive. It takes a lot longer to get all the air out. So this way you do it like two or three times and guess what? Now we're done. So we're gonna go ahead and pull our hose. All right. Go ahead, go ahead and remove our fitting here. Now I'm going to cap the top. so that it, it kind of uh, retains uh, the pressure because I don't want that brake fluid, you know, if, if, there were, if this was open and then we removed the fitting from the caliper, you'd risk all that fluid pouring out. So we go ahead and cap the top so it holds pressure. And then, we're going to remove the bottom fitting. screw in the caliper and that and I, I want you to look you can see the fluid is right at the top of the well that's exactly how we want it that's how you know you've done a good job all right and now Now we're going to remove the top set screw one, one more time. And you're going to press, you're going to press your brake handle just once or twice so that you, you, what you're checking for is, is any air gonna pop up or when we press the well does the oil come all the way up? If it doesn't come all the way up, that's an easy fix. We take the fluid that's left in the syringe and we go ahead and drop it in, into the reservoir. I may actually have to pull some more out of the bottom here.
Okay, so now when you look in there, I get my camera to focus, we can see that the oil is right up at the top. All right, so we'll press the brake handle. Now see, when, when I press the brake handle, you can see that fluid rise. It's exactly how we want it. So now you're done. Go ahead and put that screw back in there. I don't know why this camera doesn't autofocus the way it's supposed to. And now we'll check for pressure. All right. So this line, it's got full pressure. Now this line does as well. And what we'll do is the customer actually did not leave the key for this bike. What you want to do is at the very last step, you want to power up your bike and go ahead and do that a couple times. All right. And as long as, as long as you get a good lock on there, you're good to go. So take your bike out. If you have any lag or, or any um, excess depression and uh, uh, yeah, any excess play in your brake handle, go ahead and repeat the step from just removing the, uh, the uh, set screw out of the brake handle reservoir. And, and flex it back and forth, keep depressing it, make sure that you're pumping all the air out of that top reservoir. If you still don't have pressure, then you want to go back to the beginning and repeat the process. But I can pretty much guarantee that this is gonna work for you the first time. I've used this method many, many times, and I, I think maybe one time I actually had to go back and, and repeat the, the, the entire process. Now, you can use this not just for Super 73. You can use this for any Cabo series, any Dualtron, basically anything that uses uh, mineral-based, or, or not even mineral-based, anything that just has a uh, hydraulic braking system. This is the best method to use. I would tell you right now, if you haven't seen for yourself, if you can't see for yourself, it, you just cut your time in half. If you've done this before and used the method in reverse, then you know that I just saved you a bunch of time. So guys, I appreciate you stopping in and checking out our video. I hope this was a big help to you. Um, remember when you're out riding, be courteous to pedestrians. Always keep an eye out for cars. Just because you see them does not mean they see you. All right, ride safe. And just like Queen City Scooters, ride like royalty. See you guys next time. Make sure to like, subscribe, click the little bell icon so you're notified of our new videos.